In this guide the accessory will be created for the Euro Truck Simulator model. I shall add a side skirt to the truck. The modeling is beyond the scope of this lesson and omitted. I've used the side skirt, which is available on four-wheel chassis variant, and modified it for six-wheel chassis. Materials and textures are removed, and they are the aim of this guide. First of all, I've created a dummy node side skirt. This allows the game to use skirt accessory on respective chassis. Install the skirt into appropriate mounting node by drag and dropping it. Notice. I hold down control key before dropping. This forces Z modeler to keep private nodes positions instead of respecting the result position. The skirt is placed correctly. If I didn't hold control key, the skirt position in viewport would not change. The skirt is made out of several parts. The right panel. The left one. A plate on top of them. A logo on the left side. A set of lamps on each side. And four flare effect dummy nodes. I'll use white and orange effects in next lesson. Finally, a shadow model. This object will cast shadow onto the ground. Object does not need to be double sided or match geometry perfectly. This one will work fine too. I assume you've made your own model from scratch, and it has no proper materials yet. This material is used for a logo and the light frames. I use an original material for these small parts, since they are not the key point of this lesson. The skirt shadow material will be used by shadow object. It should not appear on screen in game, it should be used for casting shadows. To let the game know its purpose. I specify shadow only, in an adaptation field. The skin paint is one of the main materials in this lesson. Its adaptation should be truck paint. I copy it from original material to avoid misspells. So I do with adaptation for skirt lamps. Stamped metal is pretty simple, and uses diff.spec adaptation. All new materials should be shader materials. I've selected them and double click on shader material label. The stamped metal material will use diffuse and specular shader. I double click on it to assign shader. The skin paint and skin lamps will use shader with two texture layers. It's a dual diffuse with specular and environment. I double click to apply it to both. To edit properties of stamped metal material, I select it and click on Properties button on top. Locate Detail Rollup, and press on Texture Map button. I use a custom stamped metal texture for this material. The specular map layer should be configured to use Detail, Alpha. The skin paint material configuration is more complex. First of all, the detail texture for sign skirt is not yet available, so I pick original color texture temporary. The second detail layer will be used for paint job livery texture. I use empty texture temporary. Move its level slider down to zero, so it does not affect material. Ensure it uses manual UV number 2, and set clamp for both, U and V. The specular map is always detail, alpha. The texture for environment should be vehicle reflection. Level should be smaller, and UV coordinates should be autosphere environment. The skirt lamps is very alike. 
it uses color for detail texture. But a specific light mask texture is set on a second detail layer. This texture has a unique purpose for red, green, blue, and alpha channels in game. It uses second UV channel too, but it have to be wrapped on both, U and V. Specular map is always configured as detail, alpha. Sorry, light mask level should be zero. The environment layer is the same, it's vehicle reflection, with some lower level. Ok, materials are configured. In order to make a proper export, ensure the filter will generate correct material and texture paths. It requires the origin path to be specified. I locate the side skirt plate dummy, put it on isolated. Pick properties, double click on user defined options, and ensure origin is configured properly. Since I'll put my skirt mod into the same folder as truck, the truck path is specified. Press apply, and turn isolated off. To export accessory file, ensure default variants option is toggled. It will prevent filter from creating all these truck variants in accessory model. Only default variant will be created. I pack the mod and check it in game. The skirt is installed. Even thought no textures is mapped yet. The proper texture is very important for in-game shading. Take a look at the skirt model when I drive into shadows. It's completely flat. First of all, I'll create a UV mapping for the plate. I map the first channel and generate new mapping. Stretching a stamped metal texture of the plate model is beyond the scope of this lesson. You should check basic UV mapping video tutorial to learn mapping. The most important in this video is the proper UV mapping of the side skirt panels. I start with the right panel. Create new unwrap mapping with continuous mesh surface option toggled off. The mapping for this panel have to be arranged properly. These panels will have an ambient occlusion shading on texture. So I have to ensure the mapping does not overlap. Additionally, I try to allocate more texture areas for small fragments to ensure they have their own area of pixels for shading. I pin a chart with additional points to prevent its deformation. I want to give more area for these four spikes. Currently, they are too narrow and does not occupy enough texture space. Once points are pinned, they can be moved aside. I select and commit the chart to editable mesh. Thus it will be able to adjust vertices when needed. I shall stitch this spikes fragment. Then I take the second fragment and stitch it too. It has produced some narrow spikes that I fix on vertices level. The most important is here, an overlap has occurred. I fix it by moving vertices.
I try to stitch more charts to front facing side. The front facing mapping will occupy more texture space, so the overall quality on respective charts will be better. Of course I can stitch to the back panel too, but the texture quality on these fragments will suffer. The mapping for the right panel is complete. Then I create a mapping for the left panel. It's all the same. As you can see, I try to gain more texture space for the inner sections, so they would have enough texture area for shading. Then I commit the chart. Stitch charts and keep track on overlaps. Once overlap occurs, fix it on vertices level. And the final piece of this puzzle. When charts for left and right panels are ready, I lay them into texture area. I can resize them if needed. I set the opacity level of texture to 20, so I can see charts clearly. As you see, I've made both front facing charts bigger and both back facing charts are small. They are ready for the ambient occlusion shading. I unhide all models that would affect the shading. First, I'll add some Pervertex color. I select both panels and ensure their properties contain diffuse color in Vertex format. Then I apply some Vertex shading with Self Shadows tool. It's beyond the scope of this lesson too, so I skip this step and show in-game result. It's hardly seen, because of the messy color texture used. I revert back and load a plain gray texture onto skirt paint material. The material has a solid color texture, and I can preview it in game. The material inside shadow is still odd. I do not mess with pervertex shading currently, since most of the shading will be driven by ambient occlusion texture. So, restore mapping in UV mapper first. Here it is. Press the render UV button. I render the wireframe UV atlas just for example. We came here for ambient occlusion render. Set rays to 16. I have messed with settings already. So you can see the most preferable for shading. Emission range, shading fall off range and shadow midpoint ranges are set. The higher the range is, the further shadows will spread over texture. Colors override is a sort of gamma correction. It lets you adjust brightness of lit areas and darkness of mid shadows. By default white and black are used. I make the first draft render to preview shading. I open textures browser, pick color texture. You can see the ambient occlusion that was used on original skirt model. That's what I would try to achieve. I set the small preview area. Then increase the rays to remove noise. I reduce shadows fall off range, so shadows would not spread too far and make another preview render. I enable the colors override option to correct the gamma. Make a preview render again. When compared to original, my render is slightly darker, so brighten the light color.
now it looks almost the same. Set the render area to entire texture. Notice the missing shading in empty areas. I toggle border connectivity option to allow renderer put some neighbor pixels. As you see, original textures has filled the empty areas with color too. This is important for proper texture quality reduction. Texture quality reduces when camera moves away in game. To avoid artifacts on edges, border connectivity pixels are emitted on to texture. I set emitted rays to the maximum and render entire texture. Most of empty areas are filled. I save the texture as side skirt. Then load this texture into Textures Browser. And assign rendered texture as detail layer on side skirt paint material. Take a look at the shaded and textured skirt model and viewport. It has pre-rendered shadows in the deeping areas, and around the logo. I export and test it in game. The model brightest can now be safely corrected with Pervertex shading. As you see, the model shading is fine, even when truck goes into shadow area. The ambient occlusion texture is good, both in shadow and in direct light.